It's our last day in Istanbul. Here again is our hotel, the Empress Theodora, with Hagia Sophia behind it. And just down here, an entrance to Top Carpi, near which is the Archaeological Museum. I'm not much into museums these days, but I found this one quite bearable. Just watch this cat here. I don't think it's got anything, myself, it's just playing a game with these birds. And if it was quick enough, it would soon have something. One of those birds. We've got to catch a tram to the airport at around midday, so we shan't be here long. Just have a brief look with me. This is the main building of the museum. Here is an outdoor display area. And firstly, we are going to look in this smaller building, over to our left. And it is guarded by some portal lions, from the late Hittite period, 8th century BC. It's called, the Museum of the Ancient Orient. This section, is about the Arabian Peninsula. Now these are all placed with inscriptions from the Yemen, that's 1st century AD, 2nd century AD, and these are the 6th, and that's a statue without a head, and that's a head without a statue, 3rd to 1st century BC. Somewhere now a section on Egypt. That's a sphinx from Egypt over a thousand BC. Funerary Stella from Egypt, 2000 BC and 1000 BC. Right, we're talking Mesopotamia now, that's the statue of a king, about 800 BC. Next, we look at some decorative panels from the special procession street in Babylon. The street ran from the Ishtar Gate to the building where New Year festivities were held. The street was 18 meters wide and 300 meters in length. The lion was the sacred animal of the goddess Ishtar. They also had these antelopes. Then a display about the evolution of cuneiform writing. And a few items from the late Hittite period, 8th century BC. And this is the base for a column. And this is from the 7th century BC. It's an offering table actually. Here's the main building again. 
let's now have a brief look at this outdoor display area. Now, I think we actually spent about half an hour in that first little building, about 15 minutes here, and I must try to have a sit down because my legs are giving up. We've got all that big side to do yet, but don't worry, it's going to be an even shorter visit than I expected, I was only in there about 20 minutes and I had to give up because of my legs. Also, bear in mind that I next had to get to the airport on the tram. We are now inside the main building. You have got now, another minute or so of remnants of statuary to look at and then that's it. I think there are only two floors in this building, though there may be a basement as well. I reckon we covered about 10% of the museum. So there you are. Thank you for watching the last episode, in the last travel film which I will ever make. This voice, as you may know is not my voice but you have heard me in this episode, from time to time. This voice is in one of those software packages which you can get and which will read out what you type on the screen. This one is one of the best, though even he doesn't always get the emphasis in the right place and other little failings like that. And this is the last episode of the series on Turkey. I usually do my summary here, about the country visited, but in the previous series, which was Syria, I said that I had found Syria to be the friendliest, most peaceful country I had ever visited. I still believe that this was the case. But look what has happened since. I think I will be more careful about what I say. I have already alluded to the fact that Turkey seems to be doing very well economically, whether it joins the common European market or not. In fact, I think it's better not joining. But I had better not say any more. I have already alluded to the fact that Turkey seemed, to me anyway, to be a very friendly and peaceful country. I hope that is not tempting Providence too much. I send my thanks to everyone in Turkey who extended the hand of friendship. Anyway, go and see for yourself.